Hi, I'm Chief Rabbi Fry Mervis, and you're watching Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football! Forget about Monday Night Football! There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug! Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about this. Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. We are here at the Chicago Center for Torah and Chesed. And tonight we'd like you to join us at Aterat Ayala, where we are going to be celebrating 100 years of saying yes. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful event. 100 years since the Eichenstein family moved to Chicago began their run of doing chesed for the community, building a congregation, a shul, a place for health care, a place for uh, guests to stay, hachnasas orchim, a place for food, for families that need uh, meals, just so many things that the Chicago Center for Torah and Chesed do, including providing vaccines for people who need them. It's a wonderful event. We're going to be celebrating 100 years of saying yes. We're going to have a century of song with Baruch Levine entertaining. It's going to be a wonderful event, and you won't want to miss it. So stay with us here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. The Atkinson family dynasty has held, held up in our community with the pillars of Taira, Abayda, and Gamilas Hasada. The Gemara site of Dr. Dalar Amadal says, Getting an end of the Torah shows Hashem's chesed. So to the century-long story of the Eichmann Team of in Chicago, in the Chicago Center, is one long story of the highest caliber of chesed. The Rebbe Shlita always viewed as being born in Chicago as a sign that his life mission was to dedicate himself to the Chicago community. And the Rebbe is joined today the dedication of the Nasi or Pinto Shlita and the Rebbe was on later Shlita. This dedication and devotion, selflessly focused on our community, has now spanned four generations. And the of Shem will continue for another hundred years and generations. Incredible. Chicago was still a midbar, the Eretz lays a ruah, but it was not planted yet. I just came from the two busiest airports in the United States, LAX and Chicago O'Hare. I think they combine for 50 million travelers a year. 
But there's a smaller airport in Queens, New York called LaGuardia. I heard a laugh. It's named after a fellow, his name is Fiorello LaGuardia, who was the New York City mayor during the Great Depression in the 1930s. Legend has it that in January 1935, on a bitterly cold night, Mr. LaGuardia walks into one of the poorest neighborhoods in New York City, one of the courthouses, and he dismisses the judge for the evening. Go home, I'll take over the rest of the night. Apparently in those days, the mayor was able to do that. He sits on the bench, and within a few minutes, an old woman, tired, hungry, handcuffed, stands before him. And the prosecutor gets up, points to the plaintiff and says, Your Honor, my client is a baker. He has a bakery shop here. This woman was caught stealing a loaf of bread just a couple of days ago. We have to punish her accordingly because it's a poor neighborhood. We must set an example. LaGuardia looks at the woman and he asks, ma'am, is that true? She says, yes, Your Honor. My daughter is sick. Her husband passed away. I have hungry grandchildren. It's the Great Depression. There's no money, there's no food. In order to survive, I had to steal that loaf of bread. Prosecutor gets up and says, Your Honor, it's a $10 fine or 10 days in jail. The law is the law. And Mary LaGuardia looks at the woman and says, you're right. $10 or 10 days in jail. He's about to pick up his gavel and give the verdict. Then he stands up, takes out $10 from his pocket and says, I'll pay the fine for you. Then he turns to the policemen, the neighbors, the spectators, the lawyers in the courthouse and he says, my verdict is, each of you is fined 50 cents for living in a neighborhood that allows a poor widow and her children to go hungry. The New York papers reported the next day, $47.50 was collected to give to this bewildered woman who lived in that poor neighborhood. And I thought to myself, in 1935, that was just a little over a decade after Yeshua Heschel Eisenstein moved to Chicago just 800 miles away from New York and planted seeds of chesed to make sure that a hundred years later, as we look around us, we don't live in a community that allows a sick widow or poor, hungry children to go without food. What we're celebrating this tonight is the chesed Reich. Is the fact that we have the heartbeat of chesed in Chicago, the Chicago Center of Baruch, is a hearty of chesed Reich. <laughs>
You know, we talk about, that was beautiful, by the way. Beautiful. Come on, let's hear a round of applause. Zerua a hundred years ago, but today it's Zerua and Zerua and Zerua. It's hard to imagine what it was like. We kind of get used to it. It's like the heart beats a hundred thousand times per day, but unless you take a step back and feel it, you don't even know it. And that's why tonight is important to take a step back appreciate what the community in Chicago has because part of Connecticut, LA, you know, we don't have a powerhouse of chesed that covers all facets of life under one umbrella. So I want to tell you this wonderful, wonderful story that illustrates this point. So it was a short while ago, I was shopping at a local supermarket in LA. And this guy comes over to me and he says, Hey, where I go? You know, I love your stories. I, I, I got to tell you, I got this great story for you. So I put down my shopping basket and I said, Okay, let's hear it. He says his son was walking on one of the busiest streets in Los Angeles, Beverly Boulevard. He notices that a cop was ticketing a car that was parked by an expired meter. He notices that the car was parked in front of a shul in LA. So he immediately walks over to the cop and he says, Sir, the owner of the car is praying in the synagogue in the afternoon prayers. Please allow me to put a quarter in his meter. I'll just cover it. It's okay. Please? The cop hesitates, sees his sincerity, and he says, You know what? Okay. Guy puts the quarter in the meter, and his father in the store is telling him the story. He says, did you believe it? He saved the guy from a ticket. I said, wow. That's a reflection of your wonderful chenev that you invested in your child. I said, fantastic. It was Thursday. I was in a rush. Shook his hand at Chavez, and then he stops me. And he says, one second. Hold on. The story's not over yet. I said, it's not? Put my basket back down. And he says, his son decided to wait outside of the show to see if it was actually a guy inside the shul davening. Wouldn't you know it, Rabbi Gold? He sees you <laughs> walking out of the shul, getting into the car, driving away. It was your car. I said, you're kidding. You know, that moment when the story turns from inspirational to sensational, when it becomes yours, I said, wow. I went to the thank you card section. I got him the thank you card. Went to his house, knocked on the door. He opened the door and said, listen, I, you know, you put a quarter in my meter. I don't know what to tell you, just thank you. As I walked away, I thought to myself, who else is putting quarters in my meter of life that I don't know about, that I don't know this or appreciate? You know, very often, the people who are putting quarters in the meters of life, in our meters, in our mental and emotional meters, in our health meters, in our financial meters, in our mechanical meters, and yeah, quite frankly, literally feeding the meters of hunger thousands of recipients, food. Very often, those people are right in front of us. And tonight, those people are here. It's the Chicago Center. And it's feeding and feeding the meters of so many recipients. Tonight, we're here to celebrate. We're here to thank you. We're here to appreciate you and acknowledge you and bless you and say, yes, call me Shaliski and the Tzarek Tzibir Be'amuna. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, only HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yishalem Svarim. Only Hashem can pay you back. V'yasr mehem kol machlo, v'yir pelachal gufa. 
It's my greatest COVID and honor to introduce to the Chicago community the Rida Choyve Rebbe Shlita, who will brace us with, our, with his presence right now. Chesed is a day not lived. It's 
Sabbat in the Nasi. Yellow's Gashmias is your Rochmias. My people is a hundred. We celebrate a hundred years when we double down our, on our efforts for the next hundred years. And the Chicago Center is focused on all branches and all facets of life, but especially on Rafua now. The Midwest Rafua Health Center, Rafua 311. Perhaps it's appropriate for all of us to offer a tefillah. Mavina Malkeino, Shalach Rafua Shalema, Mechadim Abrafa, Mubarak. Avinu, Avinu. Over. I says, help me, help me, hurt my knee. 
and right away, without thinking, walks into the dish. He says, wait, wait. He says, listen, puts his hand on his shoulder and he says, I got you covered. I have you. I'll help you. Don't worry about it. I'm here with you. He says, you'll be okay. He says, I got a, I got a way. I know a way out. He hands him a stick. Helps him up. And together, from the ditch, they make their way out. My friends, of course, fuel is important, stuff is important. Even resources, medical resources is important. But for Valve, can you go down the ditch with somebody and feel their pain? When I was doing research for tonight's event, I heard incredible stories about Rafur 311. Rapsuli Matsuya, where are you? Rapsuli. He doesn't just give you the referral of a doctor's number. He makes the call for you. He follows up with you. He's down in the ditch with you. Well, that's it for tonight's event. 100 years of saying yes. Mazel tov to the Eichenstein family, to the Rebbe, to the Rav, to their children, the Nasi, and the entire family who have made this event possible and made this Chesed organization what it is today, along with all of the people that they have um, brought in to help make this one of the most unique and comprehensive Chesed centers in the country. I want to thank you for being with us. Remember, you can check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, where you can also see former shows on the web. If you want to email us or email anybody at the Chicago Center for Torah and Chesed, I'll be happy to forward to them. Our email is info at tvrabbi.com. Hope to see you next week, once again, right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Shalom, everyone. <laughs> This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.